Hey, this is your favorite German compositor, Sebastian Schütt. Today we are going to explore what can be called RGB mat or chroma merging. I'm going to give you a little deep dive to better understand and utilize this process of dealing with multiple alpha mats, one mat per color channel. It's a very interesting mathematical concept. Talking about math, if you like this kind of stuff or you're a bit scared of it, my online course Math for Artists is on a Valentine's Day flash sale right now. You will find topics like the one we're going to talk about today and many, many other tricks and concepts that will empower you as an artist. Okay, time to get you started. Are you ready? Let's go! The Merge Over Operation One of the most fundamental compositing techniques in Nuke. Let's recap what's actually happening under the hood, mathematically. Well, there is no fundamental operation in mathematics that is called over. What it actually performs is an addition of B and A. The only thing that distinguishes it from the plus operation is an additional step that gets processed beforehand. The alpha channel of our foreground element is being inverted and then multiplied with the background layer and the mask operation is doing that for RGB and A. This way we punch a perfect hole into B. In this case resulting in values of zero since we're working with an alpha channel of one for our foreground element. When we now plus A and B, we experience the illusion of layering A over B in areas where the alpha channel was greater than one. Although we're simply filling in a hole for semi-transparent alpha values, we obviously end up with a mix of both inputs. And just like that, we have the classic over operation in action. But here's the catch. This works perfectly as long as all three color channels, red, green and blue, are affected equally by a single alpha channel. That means our over formula assumes that the entire foreground object behaves the same across all colors in terms of shape and position and such. But what if we don't want that? Maybe we want or need to treat the individual channels differently. This could be due to creative decisions or simply because we want to match the characteristics of the plate we're working with. For example, chromatic aberration. There are multiple approaches to do that. I'm using the God Rays node for this example. I start by scaling up the red channel only. The green channel I will scale down, same with the blue channel, but even more. I'm obviously exaggerating things here just to show you properly what problem we will be facing. Let's go even more extreme by adding an actual translation to the red channel. Finally, I add a lot of softness to the green channel. As you can see, that results in huge differences between the channels. Let's see the result. What a mess. A single alpha channel isn't enough anymore to control this variation. We are still punching in the same hole as before, but it all doesn't add up when we, well, add up our color channels. In this case here, every RGB pixel value that is within the boundaries of the white alpha mat gets properly added to black the punched out area, while all the other pixel values outside of the mat get falsely added to the RGB pixel values of the background. This is the reason why we see this harsh transition line for pixels within the shape and outside of the shape. The pixel values outside of the shape brighten up the area due to too high values simply being added up, so completely ignoring any opacity of the foreground element. Our problem is that we have three color channels, each varying slightly due to minor adjustments, but only one alpha channel to represent them. The solution is to have three alpha channels instead, with each of them representing one of the color channels. A term that's often used for this type of operation is chroma merge, but you could also call it chromatic masking or RGB mat merge let me show you multiple ways of how to set that up. Again, I'm using multiple techniques to adjust the individual channels of this image. 
and using the regular merge over is problematic. Now that I would like to end up with a mat for each channel, I first distribute the original alpha channel into R, G and B. I mimic the same treatment that I apply for the actual color channels and this way I have a black and white representation of it. And that's what we really only need from a mat. In this example here I expression link them so I can be sure that both pipes undergo the exact same treatment. As we know the merge over operation deconstructed involves inverting the alpha channel of the foreground object and multiplying it with the background layer. The only difference is for this new approach, we invert all the channels since they're all representing their respective color channels. If we look at the result of the multiplication, we see that instead of having one punched in whole, we have slightly different versions per channel. If we now perform the last step, addition, all channels get calculated in the proper way, individually. Something you will notice is that the color perception of the merged result might differ from the foreground element on its own. That is because the mats of the respective color channels do the right thing, but the full image is based on the contribution of all three color channels plus the values of the background image. An alternative that I'm sometimes using when I want to make sure that I get the same result in terms of color perception is the following. I still work with the individual mats, but I want to create one mat that represents the three of them, meaning I want the information of all of them combined in one. It's what you could call a weighted RGB mat merge. If I want all of them to contribute with the same weight, I simply have to divide all values by three, since I have three values to combine, and then I add them together. That way I stay within the range of 0 and 1 for the new mat. I could also adjust the weights of the three values to better reflect how we perceive brightness across different color channels. In this case, the green channel would be more favored in the contribution of all three mats. The mat for each channel looks the same now, representing a contribution of all of them. Instead of introducing a color tint as seen in the per channel mat, we simply infuse the background with brightness adjustments. The result after the merge matches more to what we see in the foreground element on its own. Just be careful that the results are drastically different when you flip through the channels. The first method only seems to show the three channels almost as three different objects. The letter bakes in mat information of the other channels. There is a different way to set that up without having to use expression links. With this setup we are adjusting the color channels as well as the respective mats in parallel compared to the previous version where the adjustments were applied step by step. The important thing here is to not only apply the effect to the color channel but also to the alpha channel. This way with one output we can shuffle out the color channel as well as the mat information into separate streams. I'm collecting the chroma mats down here and rebuilding the adjusted color channels over there. By the way, something I didn't mention before, I was mostly talking about the color channels, but for the channel multiplication as well as the addition, we also have to keep an eye on our alpha channel. If you need to carry it over, it makes sense to preserve the original alpha. This way all the math adds up and we don't encounter any issues with holes or edges. It wouldn't matter too much in this example as we are merging with a fully opaque background. We have been talking about applying per channel effects and merging them the correct way, but here's something else. If we need to extract an element from a plate with significant differences between the color channels, this technique can also help us to maintain that. Let's say we have roto for the objects we want to extract. If we use only this one mat and merge it over a new background, we lose all the differences of the other channels. What we can try to do instead is to adjust the mat per channel 
to mimic what's happening in the plate. I'm taking a look at the red channel of the plate here with the red channel of the mat screened over it and trying to match the outline. This is obviously a simplified example here with a basic translation, but I hope the point comes across. I do the same for the green channel, trying to match it as best as I can. Again, this will be more complex in a real life scenario. Now I use the adjusted mats for their respective channels. Using our established approach of chroma merging, we are able to preserve all the characteristics of the original plate. Of course, this is a bit easier said than done, since it might not even be possible to 100% mimic the aberrations of the plate element. Plus, an alternate approach, if we're dealing with multiple elements, can be to remove aberrations from the different elements and reapply one uniform aberration to the merged result to blend everything together. All in all, RGB matte or chroma merging is a very interesting concept and this video hopefully helped you to understand and utilize it. This is your favorite German compositor Sebastian Schütt and I'll see you soon.